Hey there, it's Chris from Air Windows, and we're doing another live stream. So let me get my stuff. I've got my little scrolling text. That's going to come in handy. I'm glad that I figured out how to do that last week. And uh, as people show up, we'll start talking about what I'm going to attempt to do. So for now, uh, we'll sit this down where I can see it. And I might as well uh, leave that showing as long as it's not making sound and feeding back. Oh wait, I'm going to the OBS anyway. Not a problem. Although I think SWP was actually enabled. Don't don't mind me. I'm playing with the controls, as I will so often do. So yeah. Having charged up the laptop. And I got this one ready to go. And uh, I can see live chat if I squint. It's over there. Honestly, one of these days I need to set up screens and things for the live streaming purposes. Because I'm working pretty hard on being able to do uh, the video filming better. And that'll support a number of things, actually. There's stuff that I could be doing that involves like uh, lip syncing to recorded music. If I've got a track that I could put out. Uh, you've heard pieces of it a uh, kajillion times, but you've never heard it with vocals. I've got that and that could come out. And it would help to be able to uh, shoot some nice video against green screen or something for the purposes of doing that. But today, that's not what I'm actually doing. Can I resize this? I remember what I was going to do. Boom. Check it out. We're in coding land. I can sit back because I'm barely on camera anyhow. This is actually a place where I could use the um, the other camera if I have it set up because it would be basically my face and so that would fit into the corner there. Could work but um, for now not worried about doing that. So you can ask me anything you like. It is completely fine with me if you are busy playing with K plate B because uh, I can see how people might want to be doing that. I'm going to be playing with something different, in fact. I have this to play with. Let's set it up so I can work with this little puppy. Here we've got my uh, four-way householder matrix. I think we've got uh, early reflections just skipped. Or not. No, apparently we have all of the things, but that's actually not what we're doing for what I'm talking about today, because the, the ones I'm looking to revisit are, in fact, um, variations on uh, the 4x4 householder matrix which don't have either pre-reflections uh, or um, all passes in them. So we're going to get rid of that little comment there. That's the pre-delay.
That's our language for commenting stuff out in C. You know, it's interesting people talk about things like, since I was doing a lot of this stuff with the Godot engine, people talk about how, you know, they're using GDScript or how important it is to have C sharp for uh, Godot versus having C sharp in Unity or whether it's better off having uh, Unreal Engine with uh, Blueprints, which is a very different setup or uh, C++ proper. And the thing about it is that if you stick to the basics, a lot of the language in C or C sharp are the same. Like you can let stuff sort of work itself and focus on what you're actively trying to do. And you're focusing on the concepts that you're working with, which is kind of what we're gonna be doing here. So uh, let's see, we've got that sorted out. We refer to input sample L and R. Here's us defining all the band passes. Might be commenting some of those things out for the purposes of the exploration I'll be doing. There's the filtering. There's a variation on the overdrive. You know, we could skip some of this too, I think. Ah, uh, except for maybe not so much. Because, well, no, we're passing the input sample L and R just fine. Let's assume we're gonna define out sample. And hey, River Tropic, how's it going? Um, I suppose it won't hurt to have this be there. This is our filtering and stuff. And let's move that commenting so we're not doing the overdrive. And in fact, We'll even comment that out using the slash and the asterisk is the pink crocodile, hi there, is um, commenting on big old blocks of stuff. So I'm just doing a bunch of that because I want to explore how some of this will apply to galactic or infinity. but primarily what this is going to be about. And here we've got our uh, input filters with our feedbacks and this whole setup is designed in such a way where we're using the same householder matrix, but in something like Galactic, or infinity or any of those earlier ones, what it's gonna do is, um, and I might as well move this so that I can see uh, my levels and things. What it's gonna do is run through the matrix the same on either channel, right? So it's uh, four delays, each of which feeds four delays, each of which feeds four delays, each of which feeds four delays, except for when it's four, 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 it's uh, three banks of delays. I think some of them are doing that as well. I'm pretty sure with this one, it's a four by four by four by four. And doing it the way I was doing it in Galactic means that all of the signal runs through the same matrix, both sides. Whereas what I'm doing with this current stuff and what I'm gonna to try to explore a little bit in you know the hour and 50 minutes or so that we've got to stream in is setting up the same thing, but listening to what that sounds like. And you, you won't hear the, re, the, the uh, stereo, unfortunately, but I will. 
on two channels where one channel runs through the householder matrix in one direction and the other one goes like top to bottom. It goes the other direction, meaning that you have exactly the same total number of delays, but they're organized differently in each channel. I want to hear what that sounds like when you run just centered mono stuff through it. Because there's things I can do as far as updating uh, older reverbs to uh, account for that. And we do have a mulch and filtering. And here we are making outputs. The nice thing about the 4x4x4 four by four by four, um, householder matrix is the way it works is for everything feeding back into everything else. The geometry of that is if you have this sort of matrix of how everything feeds into everything else um, across the width of the whole matrix, each step of the way you've got one of the outputs that is feeding in positively to everything else and it goes kind of down the diagonal there's this little band of like positive feedback positive feedback positive feedback positive feedback and all the other entries in the matrix are flipped they're negative but they're not gain changed Aaron, reverse plugin that lets your example chord progression still be in the same order. Ooh, I don't know how that would work. I'm afraid I don't have an answer for that one. Uh, if you want to make more comments and describe how that happens or what that does, I'll be happy to hear what you have to say about it, but I can't really imagine what that would do. Just for fun, let me pop out chat and like try to make it bigger or something. There we go. Usual fooling around with Windows. Yeah, so this is what we're looking at. What you see above, this area here, I'll select it. That's the matrix we're talking about when we talk about a householder matrix. As you can see, you know, you got like M is I minus J, K, and L. So for going into the next delay line, M gets the output of I positively, but the other ones are being added together and then subtracted. The other ones are all being applied negatively. N gets exactly the same inputs as all the other four, but in that case it has J applied positively and all the other ones are applied negatively. So that's how a householder matrix works is it's this combination of everything feeds into everything else but some of them are flipped or reversed so that when the whole thing winds up wrapping around and the output of the whole reverb gets fed right back into the input again, you can get to infinite reverbs that are sort of nice and smooth and they don't run out of control and they don't emphasize any frequencies over any others. That's sort of the idea for how that works in practice. And it's not an easy thing to do with reverbs. It's kind of magical that this particular way of arranging things just gives you that. The 4x4x4x4 four by four by four by four matrix, it just sort of gives you that for free on the output of it, which is pretty cool. It's going to be a neat week for me, honestly, because I've been putting up all this reverb work to the point where people are like, Oh my god, you have a new reverb that suddenly? Well, you'll see how, kind of how that works because I'm working on exactly the same technology here. But it also means that um, I could take a week to sort of chill out a little bit or more likely I'll be diving into some of the things that I wanted to do while I was working on the reverbs. And there's a number of things like that.
And this may very well be another one of those things where, like you see here, we've got stereo flips. This is how the feedback matrix works. This is how we know whether channels are feeding into each other or not. And then there's our output matrix. And then we have uh, filtering, and we've commented out the early reflections. And this is the downsampling, the undersampling that I was talking about. So uh, I can't pronounce your binary name. I suppose if I wanted to work at it, I could. If anybody wants to punch that into a binary to ask a converter and tell me what that person's name is, if it's if it's legit to post, maybe it's a swear. But uh, you know, one of the things that I'm going to need to work on is technology for diving into the uh, for the for the video I was pointing up there, and I had my records over there. In fact, I was leaning some of the uh, George Harrison "All Things Must Pass." against that pipe to be in shot and then the radiator came on so one of my George Harrison records went just at the edge so I broke I broke a vinyl record I'm just glad that I chose the uh, the all things must pass to be that rather than Abbey Road or Dark Side because the Dark Side record is actually fairly valuable the all things must pass the box was destroyed so I don't even have it anymore and uh, and I don't listen to that that much. And the purpose of me getting out those records wasn't that I wanted to listen to particular tracks off of them, but I must capture some of those things so that I have reference even if I can't play it on stream. Like, I need to be able to listen to bits of Abbey Road in the highest quality I can get off of the original vinyl. I'm not sure that's literally original vinyl. I don't think it's British vinyl, for instance. But it's like old... Apple pressing and the dark side of the moon is in fact the audio file pressing and all of these things and of course all things must pass didn't go into a million re-releases so that's also an older record and so that's going to give me a good picture of what the TG console the TG1234 console actually sounds like because that's the thing for some of the stuff that I'm working on I really need to be able to put together some of these tools into things like uh, you talk about Air Windows Tube Mastering EQ. What does that mean? Like you could say, oh, manly massive passive, of course. Well, you could you could take like the Logic Channel EQ and wrap it in like in an old version of console or an old version of console with the uh, one of the there was one of the, what was it, console five maybe? But you could take an old version of bus colors and set it on, I think there was a tube setting, which actually was the um, uh, off of impulse responses of a manly massive passive. It was set kind of flat. But that particular setting on that particular setting on bus colors does come from that piece of equipment you're talking about. The thing is, it's just a coloration. It's an impulse response being applied to it like it was a reverb. And then you could put that on, go through any generic, you know, any reasonably good like stock EQ. You could do a Reaper channel EQ or the Logic channel EQ. You click on the little EQ thing. And what that gives you is a, basically a bunch of biquads. And I'm making biquads. That's what some of my stuff is based on. The thing is that that all by itself isn't necessarily the greatest. And if you do that and then, or you could do the Logic channel EQ, but put it after the channel plugin in a console 8 mix or console 8 light or something like that put it inside the console calculation what's going to happen is boosts are going to become more aggressive and hit harder and cuts are going to become more aggressive and cut harder and it's going to act like an analog 
mastering EQ. And it, it it's here's the thing. And I am completely fine with pontificating for the entire thing because as you've seen, I will just get to work on the actual plugins at another time when I'm not talking to chat. So this is a fine time to talk to chat or answer them these questions because why should I just, you know, I can code on my own time. When you ask for things like that, sometimes you're asking for just the coat of paint. And in order to, and I'm hoping to be able to demonstrate this, like case in point, the recording that was done for, and I'm, I'm delighted that people like the bit of music that I did for the Kate Plate B video. I, I'm thrilled that people enjoyed that. It's basically musically nothing. I just sat and plugged my keyboard into, it's the keyboard is set up to go into the Kurzweil. It's, it's a micro piano. That is a cheap old piano module. You could probably do much better with a soft synth. You could probably do much better with freely available like piano libraries. Or failing that, expensive for bought uh, piano libraries. Point being, I, I went and I got the micro piano. I've also got a Proteus. One of the reasons I have those is I'm looking to like do a set of recordings of say chords on those capture them using good quality converters and make a library of like, here is your piano chord library. And when you use this and trigger it in a sampler like Renoise or whatever, then you can get the output of the chord being played as if it was coming off of the hardware box. So often the way of doing these things is capturing something right not messing with it and then following certain basic principles for how that works. Let me jump back into this just so that I don't completely lose track. I was going to make sure I didn't have uh, let's see that there too. Now we have only dry wet and none of the color processing. A lot of this color processing is um, for the acoustic simulation reverbs I'm putting out. And that doesn't really apply that much to verb fours. What does apply is what we've got here. New word says this must be included to set up the delay lines. So we've got a verb four, which is a fairly uh, scarce. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking into some other reverbs. This is not going to be, we've got kind of some of the more plate things taken care of, and I have confidence that I'll be able to get into those. So I figure I was going to explore some of these other things like uh, I've been asked to take out the chorus effect out of Galactic and release that as separate. So maybe it would be a good idea to look into doing a Galactic 2 that, you know, can I make that jump ahead a little bit from what I had before? Because when I was doing Galactic, when I was doing uh, Infinite, when I was doing Matrix Verb, those were arrangements of prime numbers that I just made up. Like the whole reverb thing back then was stuff that I just made up and that was all it was. Whereas with these ones that you're hearing now, I've got a piece of software that I made in the Godot engine and it's generating combinations of prime numbers for reverb delay times. And like you can see on the screen, where you see the very end of this thing, it says in short N, 17, in short O, 79. Those are delay lengths. I worked the whole thing out so that it only defines the delays that you want, and you can change it in that place, and everything recalibrates itself to, to compensate. And 
then it says 100 milliseconds, 1,199 seat hall. That's also part of how I'm like working this stuff out. That would be effectively kind of like a, um, that's a little bit like a slightly larger than Abbey Road Studio B, which is another thing I have on my radar sized room. So that's not as big as the room that Galactic is. Galactic uses much larger delays. It eats a lot more space in the computer running it. And you'll also notice at the end of that says scarcity one in 73,389. So when I did Galactic, it was basically one in one. I just tried a combination of prime number delays and went, oh, okay, that sounds pretty good. With this stuff, I'm able to measure how even the uh, delay time is and work with that. And let's do exactly that, actually. Older version. So let's hear that on note silence. Hear how that just went bop. That makes a note. And this is one of my test beds for testing out reverbs. We're going to have to go to it again. Reverb fours. Have the sustain be all the way up. This stuff be all the way down. I think Rezo is still doing something, so that's going to be all the way down. Stereo flips all the way down. We're going to just max it out until it is as uh, clear as we can get. And what do we got? So it's fading off a little bit, and we've also got a little pre-delay in there. It's taking a moment to kick off, and it's not doing a full sustain thing. And we can go to the very end, and it'll beep again. And some of what we're doing with the reverbs is like uh, and we'll set those down to zero as well. I don't think we're running pre-delay. I'm not really quite sure why it's doing what it's doing, but we'll see. Oh, out stages. That's what we want. So when we hear a high frequency in the output of this, that's because the householder matrix itself, see how it's a little darker. It's coming out a lot louder. If we had this stripped down until there was nothing in the filtering at all, what we would have is the infant sustain reverb, but since it doesn't do any filtering, it doesn't really sound very much like reverb. It sounds like a sort of bright sparkly thing going on like I'll hit it and then I'll hit output stages which is a post verb filter right dark and even then it's not all that dark but you can hear how it kind of continues and yet you hear this sort of whoosh. let me see now uh, reverse the delay um, River, I would be doing that in the DAW. Like the classic way of doing that kind of thing is, yeah, flip the tape over or do a reverse on the audio that you're sending the reverb, bounce it to another track, and then reverse your audio again and reverse the output of the reverb again. And then you, there you have the, the flipped thing. That is basically, uh, 
user interface affect the quality of the sound? That's weird. So there's a number of ways why that could be the case. And there are also ways why that is. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about user interface inter elements substantially affect the quality of sound. Some things should not be affecting your sound. And other things like if you're running through stuff, then maybe it will affect the quality of the sound. Modern versions of Reaper, if you've got them set up the way that I set them up, shouldn't be doing that. So the way that stuff that affects processing on the computer would affect the sound is by affecting your playback. So if you've got stuff that is interfering with the processing of the computer in such a way that it could interfere with the sound, that would normally be because it is causing more jitter on the interface. Rather than simplifying the load on the computer so that the audio thread is less jittery. But honestly, that sounds buggy to me, and I've not really observed that myself. So firstly, one of the things I would do is uh, I would do the thing that all of the, you know, computer audio people on YouTube would tell you to do. I would tell you the same thing. I am audiophile guy. I'm interested in listening to the results of things. I don't blindly trust the audio, the output of digital audio. But what you should do is bounce stuff down with the user interface substantially affecting the quality of the sound. Then shut all the stuff off, bounce it down again, then compare the results. And you can compare the results with the null test. You can like line them up, flip the phase of one and see if you have no output because what could be happening is you could be bouncing stuff, finding that you have to turn out, turn off grid, master track, etc. When you do that, as you bounce, it sounds better. I'm assuming that you're listening to it while it's bouncing because otherwise I don't understand at all. You could be hearing just your conversion crapping out. And by that I mean if it is your conversion crapping out, then the end listener will not hear the problem you're hearing. As long as it's not dropping frames or making sputtering noises in the output audio, you can run through a chain that screws up your clock signal so badly that your output converters are jittery as all hell, making the sound complete garbage. And as long as you're capturing it digital to digital, rather than going through an analog stage, play it back on a good system again and it sounds good again. Digital is weird that way. What you're hearing doesn't necessarily represent what you're getting. Uh, Stan Stee's what are multi stages? That's just what I called the... Uh, actually, I can show you that. Check this out. Here we have... our noise. And there are zero mulch stages. Mulch stages are averaging filtering inside that uh, reverb tail. Now I've got uh, bandpass filters, biquad filters also in there. That's why it's fading off. If I comment those out, it won't fade off. But listen to what it's different when I turn the mulch all the way up. This is one of my methods of making the sound die away into a darker, more realistic ambience. Mulch stages are going on a separate set of uh, delay passes. Like we've got the four by four by four by four, the, the house over matrix. So I have sets of biquad filters and those produce a much more extreme effect. That's how I'm getting the plate reverb sounds to a large extent. But mulch is simultaneously doing a simple average filter. So that's going to cut out everything above 10K or so.
and you can hear it kind of dying away. And in fact, I can shut that off and go and find the uh, something else silence that I had. Maybe I was calling it noise silence, drum silence, snare silence. See, there's the other one. That. So if we apply that, and cause I'm gonna, I'm going to show you the thing I'm doing with this in a minute. But uh, here we have the ultimate sustain with as little filtering as possible. The biquads are still doing something; they're just not doing very much. And you can hear it's kind of. However, if we do mulch, mulch is average in filtering between each of those stages parallel to the biquad filters. So it's just an additional level of dark. I think that's very useful. I use the biquads for color and flavor, like for instance. Here is the biquad filter engaged. Actually, let's engage it on. These these are making a bank of uh, biquad filters that go from A to D and interpolate the ones in the middle. So I have to set them both to a middle section in order to hear what it does, which is this. Infinite reverb. Uh, biquad filter band passes in between each of the stages and this time no mulch and we're only sustaining the thing that's in the biquad filter whether that is a high frequency sound that's going to come in handy for some of the Bracosti emulations some of the Bracosti emulations really lean into have a high frequency sustain. There are like vocal reverbs that are just all about that glittery stuff and that's how it's done. Here we have, we'll push it all the way, we have a 10K. Kind of crazy, huh? But if we have mulch cranked up all the way, it does both of them at the same time. And it takes that uh, bright, shiny filtering. Just for fun, let's take the resonances down to as low as they will go again and hear what we get. See, that really shows off the brightness of the householder matrix with no filtering. This will never sound like an acoustic space. You can't have an acoustic space where 20 seconds after, you still have loads of highs in there. They die off with time. They die off with travel through air. And all reverb is, is sound traveling back and forth through air as it bounces off of everything. And that's why we've got mulch in there. It'll just kind of fade off. And when it says mulch stages, none of these have actual, like, uh, they don't have little dry wet controls or little amount controls. Instead, it just switches in one or more of these averaging filters whole cloth. It doesn't go part way into the averaging filter. It's just like one of the averaging filters, two, you know, three, four, so on. So zero of them is this. All of them is this. One of them is this. Yeah, exactly. And that's what air does. That's one of the reasons why sound in digital audio systems often is frustrating, unsatisfying, and kind of like 
Hyperpop is all cool and all. There's a lot of stuff that exists primarily because it is that aesthetic. Like uh, one Hyperpop um, artist that I quite like uh, recommends Autecker. I've listened to Autecker and it's really interesting. It's really creative stuff. And I bounce off the sound of it because it doesn't sound like sound to me. It feels like things poking the my eardrums in weird ways, and, which is neat. It's neat. But um, a lot of my sound experiences, I like to be acoustic spaces or things that happen in the real world. Like if I was chilling out in a forest in the middle of the night with insects chirping all around me or whatever, and then a wind rises through the valley and you hear a wolf howl in the distance, you're not going to get any of that out of a raw daw. That experience is the experience of being a human being in an acoustic space and being able to model how that works is way beyond what a lot of modern DAWs are, are doing by default. And in the absence of being able to design my own DAW and give it to people, I have to make a bunch of plugins to do various things. Here, we'll keep this moving because there were things that I was going to do with this. Here is all of my householder matrices. Note uh, Carnegie Hall examples. Some these are what I'm going to be doing some of today. Okay, rooms and K halls. Yes, yes, that's that's planned. You can see all of this stuff that I've been generating. K okay, Studio B. That means Abbey Road Studio B, and thankfully. Thank, thanks to uh, Rick Beato, who did a video where he went to Abbey Road and asked all the same questions everybody asks, because, of course, why would you not ask those questions? The guy, like, answering the questions is a little tired of it, maybe, but uh, the guy going there for the first time isn't tired of it, and you got to remember that, you know, be human, understand that it's an exciting process. But one of the things he did was he's standing in the middle of Studio B, and could not resist. He clapped and I had him. He clapped and that means there's a video that I downloaded off the internet where there is audio of those guys standing in the room and Rick clapping and then the sound of I might need to, as it's being picked up off his lavalier mic, you know, so there wasn't a good mic on that acoustic space, but all the same, I had him. That will show me what I need to do in order to do a K Studio B. And I've also got, I had a, uh, a DVD called Sound City that Dave Grohl did. I'm pretty sure there's a section in that. I'll be finding it during this week. There's a section in that where he talks about like, yeah, for never mind. We set up my drums in Sound City, and that is the most amazing drum room ever. It shouldn't be because it's weird, but it is. And he sets up his drums, and you get a little burst of like him playing, you know, Smells Like Teen Spirit. And you're hearing this large smashing noise of the live Sound City studio room. And again, I had him with audio like that. I can take one of these reverbs that I'm working on and tune it to do the same thing. That's what all these tools are for. Speaking of which, oh yeah, these are the ones that have been used. They do not get used again. Once I have used them and finished tuning them, mind you, that's it. So what were we going to do? We were going to look into our new Galactic options. So what Galactic is effectively is it's roughly a maximum 358 millisecond delay that just feeds back on itself forever. So that's a 50, 15,000 feet stadium. 
uh, 15,000 seat, sorry. That's like Madison Square Garden scale. And that's one of my, my goals for the 5x5 matrices. But one of my goals for revisiting Galactic is figuring out whether I can do one of these more tuned and optimized for sound reverb matrices rather than just accepting the ones that I, I locked into. Because it's like, okay, that was cool and all, but that's like first try. Whereas with these, I have, you know, a hundred best of a hundred thousand randomly generated tries, all using the same batch of, you know, same batch of prime numbers to feed them. So we're going to hear what some of that stuff does. Here is our householder matrices. And we have these. And this is kind of what we're going to be looking for. Interest. Oh. So we're going from 358 milliseconds down to 289 to 290 milliseconds. But the thing I'm going to do here is the same thing that I did for some of these other ones. And we're going to leave some of these alone. What you've been hearing is one of these ones here. It's maybe a... Oh, I could go and look and find out. I'll tell you which one it is. If it isn't one of these, I'll, I'll copy it and put it back. Because you don't want to lose it. Because it was kind of cool in its way. So short A277. It was this one. It was 100 millisecond. 1,000 seat hall, and the scarcity was fairly high, but this one's a higher scarcity than that. And that one is fairly well calculated out. But what we're going to do is comment these guys out so that we only use one of them at a time. And then we will listen to each of these options. That is one of the things that I'm, I need to do for all this stuff, including rooms going forwards. That's part of the system of doing things like going, here is Rick Beato clapping his hands in Studio B. Here is my system. I can tune all of those frequencies I can tune the bi-quad filters and all that. That that proves necessary when you're actually doing anything that's remotely realistic. Otherwise, it's completely and utterly fake sounding. But once you have that roughed in, you have to start experimenting with some of these different options. And that's what we're about to do. No more of that one. And now we have these ones. So these are going to be our experiments. We're going to listen to what each of these sound like. Because they are going to be our acoustic spaces going forward. And you heard what the original one sounded like. We're going to quick build this. And then Go back to Twisted Wave, and let's use the snare that we just used for this. This is what we had before. Let's turn all the mulch off, turn all of this other stuff off, and we're hearing just the full bright. You should be able to hear how different this becomes. Here's what we had. And that doesn't sound like galactic because all of its reverb constants, all of its delay times are much, much shorter. But, let's see, do we have our, yes we do. I'll put this where I can click on it more easily. Boop. Now that we've swapped that out, or it could be like this. The 
this is a much longer you can hear it kind of hanging on in a more sustained way so we could have a galactic that acts like this or if we use mulch in it which galactic I don't think actually has it's, it has a post filter you can hear how it's fading out longer and the reverb constants are just bigger so let's leave it full sustain full mulch and these bands set up the way they are we'll keep that the same it's also not crossing over from side to side this is not actually a dual mono in the normal sense but we have no stereo flips so a thing that's fed into one channel is going to stay in that channel that's actually what Waves does with their plate reverbs as well, which is not what I'm doing with mine. But um, the dual mono thing is interesting and useful in its own right, because when you do that, the reverb sound sticks with the generator. It sticks with the sound that you're making. So if it's in stereo, the reverb sound sits in the stereo field in the same place that it was. The question becomes, and I guess I can listen to this just where the speakers focus and, and check that out myself because that's one of my questions was does this centered sound make a wide stereo field or not because if I was using regular galactic it would not and I'm saying my answer is yeah <coughs> I would I would not call that a super wide stereo field You know what else? It's technically possible to take mid-side and apply that to our feedback to some extent anyhow. Because here's the thing is we are feeding things back in the pure householder matrix sense, but we can also mix stuff down to um, Well, here, li listen to this. I'm going to show you something. So this is what it sounds like when we have, let's say, slightly less of a... Uh, ooh, hello. No, sustain is not the one I wanted to move. Slightly less of a mulch, so it's going to stay bright. We start putting in a stereo flip, and it's going to change everything. It will affect the decay of everything. Now this is a lovely smooth thing because the 4x4 householder matrix is a very smooth sounding decay tail. That's not always what you want in trying to make stuff that acts like real spaces. But as a result of it, the stereo flips isn't doing all that terribly much. But it is doing something. I'm hearing distinctions in there. And when making reverbs like this, the job is to hear what it's doing sort of in the far recesses of the reverb tails and match it to what the recording of the real space, whether it be Dave Grohl playing drums in, uh, there might even be a place where he plays drums in the Sound City big room and then stops. And in the movie, you hear the and that's the stuff I'm going to need for duplicating things like that. Because the basic tech is there for making it be able to happen. It will almost always be setting the biquads to very low frequencies with a certain amount of uh, resonance in there. And probably also some mulch because that is a way of having that acoustic distance seem like it's there. So first, let, let's let's bounce some of this stuff back again. No stereo flips. And let's go to how about the note silence. Maybe that'll tell me more. All 
our setting is the same as we had it and what I think the brightness of this is distracting, so I'm going to mulch it out. Hear a bit of a hiccup there. So what I need to do is come up with descriptions of what I'm hearing that will help me as I compare them with each other. I'm thinking the way that it's fading in and out is reminding me of like desert sands. So I'm going to call this audio clip Desert Sands, and now see whether this other one feels different. Because now this is the other one I'm, I'm checking out. And it is actually... That previous one was the least scarce one, and this one is at least as scarce as this, if not more so. So it had a great deal of linearity to it. And I, I stopped it while it was still grinding away on that. So they're all very matched in the uh, space, but they're not going to be the same as far as tone quality is concerned. So again, a little reminiscence of what the previous one sounded like. We called this Desert Sands. And I quit out of there and put the new one in. And back we go. One useful way of using this older machine is that I can swap out uh, plugins and put them to use immediately. And the new one. Probably will be worth finding some other audio because this is all so smooth that all this is telling me is like, yeah, this is smooth. Another thing we could do is cut the sustain way down, at which point it'll do this. And that might be worth some exploration. So with no mulch and no sustain, this is what this other one is. Oh, there we go. And we'll maybe go back to the previous uh, version. Or we could just find something else. Maybe not uh, a link it. <coughs> Excuse me. So we could do, for instance, something completely unrelated. I've been listening to this over and over and over again, so this might be a way of showing me. This is somebody else's plate reverb and their raw sound. So if we took that and then applied this other uh, thing to it, we'd have this. And it becomes a question of what does that sound like? Because they're very similar. Hey, Skyship.
They're very similar, but they are going to have distinctions, and the hard part is figuring out what those distinctions actually are. So I'm probably going to use that because I was hearing that maddening drum loop so many times. And we're going to go back to the one I initially called Desert Sands and see if it still reminds me of that when I'm listening to it on Ye Old Drum Loop. Because having that, that reference might come in handy. And there's no reason to play the other people's plate reverb sound because we're no longer even interested in duplicating that. Instead, we are just listening to what this reverb sounds like. And I think I might put on some mulch as well just to make sure that it sounds like a variation on real rather than purely an artificial thing. And here we go. Now one of the things that's happening here is I don't have pre-delay on this, but it's a householder matrix on a very long delay time. So the way that the reverb density goes is not immediate echoes all over the place and then they die away. Like what happens with a plate is you get a big burst of echoes very quickly. Whereas in any real acoustic space, you get a smaller number of echoes that combine and add onto each other. With this technology, if you're using the householder matrix, what you get is a sort of cloud. It acts a little bit like um, MV. It acts a little bit like stacks of all passes, where the output of that is going to first have no sound like you have a pre-delay just because none of the echoes are kicking in yet. Then you have that cloud of all of the ways that the echoes combine kicking in. And then if you have sustained, they start feeding back into each other and it gets much more so. But if you don't have as much sustain, you have this burst of echo density that then tapers off. And that's why it's easy for it to sound like a um, a plate because the way that it's shaped kind of acts like that. So here's our first example. I'm no longer going to think that sounds like desert sands to me. So I'm going to call that maybe a shallow box, not just desert sands. And it's going to be real interesting figuring out whether these sound so similar to each other that it makes it difficult. But that's the purpose of going through this. Like I have to spend hours doing this stuff. And the reason I'm saying that is it sounded like the back wall wasn't really super far back. It sounded like it was more up front and maybe wider because we're listening to a, a stereo effect. Like one channel is the householder matrix going across ways and the other channel is the householder matrix going vertical ways. And as a result of that, the shape of the acoustic space being produced is going to be different each time. And my job today is doing a little exploration, figuring out how that applies itself. And I'm also very curious as to whether that will lead to a better galactic, a better infinity, if it turns out that that's something that I want to do. Because all the older ones have this basic sort of, you know, a 4 by 4 matrix where the delays are all kind of long. They're all kind of based on this. And the way that I adjust for um, tightening it up is just by scaling all of the the prime numbers down and I'm not going to be having a size control on a new version of it because I'm trying to design it into the optimal place from the beginning 
Galactic was never very good at being small rooms. Galactic was never very good at being that stuff because you lose the integrity of the prime number delay timings as you go and it starts not working that way anymore. So last one was more of a shallow room. You go in there again. And that sounds more plausible to me. It feels like there's a space there. The ceiling is a little bit lower. Just the tone of it in general isn't going to give me like wood room vibes, but the geometry of the space. I hear it going wider. And if we do stereo clips. Oh wait, that doesn't matter. Stereo flips only applies if I have sustain. I don't have sustain. If I did, it would be doing this. try to describe what the shape of this space feels like to me. Hi there, Lifeline. Because I have four of these to analyze, and like if I use one for Galactic and a different one for Infinity, that gives them a distinct quality. I can tailor the way that it behaves. Oh, it is. That's, it's a lot of work. I can pick the ideal set of householder matrices for any particular purpose. So it feels like more spatial, more like a room with a lower ceiling. accept that because I'm not sure how farther I can go without sitting there for 20 minutes listening to that same loop and you will all go insane because you don't necessarily have the stamina that I do for that kind of stuff. I will chase everybody away really fast trying that. Flatter, spatial, room-like. The interesting thing will be is if I get any of these that distinctly sounds different. And you might have to take my word for it because it might not come across very well on YouTube. But save and we will try number three. And here what we have different about this guy. Again, all of the other settings are the same. That sounds kind of more centered. And you know what? It feels to me a little bit like it's a higher ceiling. And not necessarily like the other one felt like a flat ceiling, like it was a, a boxy room without the ceiling being very tall. This feels weirdly more like an arched ceiling. It feels like it could be a church-like space. And in order to make it be a church-like space, we do stuff like shape it. And that's what's going to give it more of the realistic acoustic spaces is how the filtering hits it, where in the sustain of the decay the filtering hits it, and so on. But in our raw exploration of how this stuff works, just only the reverb matrix, this really has a church-like vibe to me. 
but it's larger than a church would be, so we're going to call it Cathedral. And that's a nice discovery. Like, if you pick a uh, matrix that vibes like a cathedral, and then you filter it to be more like a cathedral, you can really get in the zone. Whereas if you pick, you pick one that feels like a shallow box, and try to make that vibe like a cathedral, you can get closer, but it's not going to come quite as close. So we're calling that Cathedral Arches and being very pleased, even if it's a very subtle overtone, because that's the stuff that is going to make it. And you know, that's not necessarily going to be the answer for something like uh, Galactic. Galactic isn't necessarily supposed to sound like a space with uh, an arched ceiling. If I can find one that feels like oof, off into the distance somehow, that's going to be the one that I choose for Galactic. Assuming, of course, that it works properly for that. You can see all these cerebral constants are different. And we'll build this, and we have a fourth one to try. And same deal. And our fourth one is going to be a little something like this. Ooh, interesting. Did you hear that? Because I heard that. The way this particular impulse works is it's like a burst of density sort of coming forth and then receding again there's a way in which it comes like comes in waves and it's not sounding as much like a room as like dive into it again The way the sustain goes, it's a very steady block of sound. It's totally acting like a gated reverb, and that's purely coming out of the uh, reverb constants alone. In other words, the way that some of the other ones worked out, there was a burst of volume that tailed off. This one's like a block of sustaining volume that then subsides. This might be my ticket for doing a new galactic that sounds better than the original galactic. Because part of what made galactic what it was, was that ability to make blocks of reverby space hanging in the air and have it be like a sustaining sound. So if I had that, We'll make it be quieter. And then we added a bunch of sustain. when we do reverb flips. Interesting. So that's very steady. But we just change the tone just by flipping it. We went entirely from 
It might be worth, we'll edit this a little bit and see what we get. Just make sure not to uh, record it that way. Don't hit save. This is temporary. Somebody hammering nails outside. I'm sure you can hear that. Let's make our noises again. But this time we have a yeah, well, that 80s snare verb, that's not actually difficult to get. What I'm trying to do is clouds of echoing reverberant space that sound like galaxies, right? Like, it's all very well doing, this is the plate reverb on top of Abbey Road, or this is the sound of Abbey Road Studio B. Galactic, I lucked out on something where the selections I made just happened to work pretty well with the things that they were doing, the, the widening and so on. So here, and you're not going to hear it as such, but uh, this is... It's purely and only dual mono. And that's all right. But if I do stereo flips, I will be able to hear what some of that does. Like how fast does it go from one place to another if we have literal stereo things happening? Because part of what Galactic was about was like, well, mono stuff is just being mono. I don't know what to do about that. So tell you what, let's artificially widen it for everything. And that maybe isn't what I'm going to want to do for a Galactic 2, because Galactic 1 already exists. So I could maybe take out the, um, the stereo chorus thing that lives in Galactic and forces it to be wide, and literally do something entirely different, and go from there. So here is all the stereo flips. And it's interesting, but I'm not sure if I like it because that's really taking away its ability to have clouds of reverb sitting in one place or the other. Let's see what it is like with one stereo flip. I say I'm not unhappy with how that's working. Let's see what happens when I do two. It's what I'm hearing is highs and we go kind of and if I do fully stereo flip, it immediately blends into a single thing, and I don't want that, that's too much, but if I have no stereo flips, stuff just sits, and then stuff just sits, and that's all well and good, but I don't want it quite that, I want a little bit of crossover. Here. We're getting experimental here. What happens if we do a combination of the two? Let's edit this test bed and see what we can make happen out of that. I'm probably not going to get to building an actual Galactic 2 today because that would involve a bunch of copying and pasting and fiddling. But we might be able to 
get this so far that uh, Galactic 2 is practically ready to go. That would be kind of exciting. Let me take a moment also and peek over here. Who need? So, I was talking about how I can do one stereo flip. What that means is I have these two reverb tanks. They're set up so that a sound in the middle actually has a certain amount of ambience around it. Sounds hard left or hard right do not cross over in any way. The original um, Galactic was designed to sort of make everything be a stereo chorus, so stuff in the middle did not create just a centered sound. We've already solved that, but what about having stuff that is literally hard one side or hard the other? How do I make that crossover? And I'm thinking that the answer to that is going to be partial stereo flip, because the stereo flip is the output of the four matrices feedback into the input of all the matrices, and I do four channels of that. But for one of the channels, you have the left flip to the right and the right flip to the left. But what if, what if, instead I merged them and then ran with that? And that might be easy to do. Let's see if it's easy to do. Don't say hey, no, no, no. Let's call this Galactic 2, and I think we probably discovered which one was best. These other three, maybe not so best. To the extent, in fact, where I can... And we're not even going to need to use a uh, early reflection, so that's moot. I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit hoarse. I am going to stop in about a half an hour because when I beat myself into the ground this way, it's not necessarily good. It can be worth it though, but uh, so here's our four by four matrices. These guys are actually not labeled, but that's fine. I will, however, give them my little uh, comment thing so that I can do what I just did, but with these. Because who knows, maybe a, this seems like a kind of a small space to have a 4x4 four four householder matrix be any use at all. But there, somebody was talking about how they were using a really primitive earlier version of it, and they just loved the way that it made this continuing color texture. Well, you could use a infinite householder matrix like this in a really short delay time, and then it would be kind of like, this is a texture. This is a sound color that persists and sustains and whoosh, and it just becomes that. In fact, I can probably demonstrate that using the uh, Galactic. Save this, quit out of there. Won't be needing uh, this SD card for anything right at the moment. And now we have our likely candidate for the new Galactic tone. And here's our stereo flips. So here's what we're doing. Stereo flips larger than zero, that will equal one. That's one of the banks. This is the only one that we're going to flip, but what we're going to do is this. We, are, we have a temp variable that we can use, which is outsample. That happens to be sitting there, and we can use it for stuff. We're, we're frequently using it for many things here, mulch, all, all that kind of stuff. We're using it in the middle of the uh, 
we're using it in the middle of the bicloud filters is using the out sample so we can use it here as well and it's going to say out sample equals parenthesis See, we got both of those, and in order to make it flip, instead of like feedback D is out A, R, it's feedback DR is out ML. So we're using the ones that would be used, but we're swapping the channels. But that is now, out sample is now halfway between both. It's feedback DR plus feedback AL divided by 0 0.5. As long as I have stereo flips larger than 0, as in I've turned it on and it's, it's set to 1. How did I come up with these prime numbers for the delays? The program that I'm using has a giant list of prime numbers and it's assembling them into matrix, matrices, like the 4x4 four four matrix and then just testing them. It's going through, grinding away, and doing a calculation of what that reverb, what those delays would act like. And it's doing it in the Godot game engine, like plotting out on a screen a picture of this is all of these delay taps. Every time you come to this, the output of this delay, draw a vertical line, you know, draw a pixel. Or, or take that pixel and increase it by one and then go through and like sustain it a little bit like one of them just does that but divides it over and over again it's the sort of curvy line that you see flickering on my screen sometimes and then once it's finished calculating that stuff out it does a plot which is plotting that on the screen like line by line it's doing more and more delay matrices, but it's it's running through it using um, each of the delay taps as a seed for a new batch of delay taps. Like the delay overall is that entire pattern overlaid on top of itself over and over again, because that's kind of how like feedback in these works is you start overlaying them on top of each other and you're shooting for the minimum overlap and not having like things be reinforced in weird ways. And when you're using these many prime numbers in these ways, what you start getting instead is sort of the shape of the space because it's a householder matrix. It's not going to feed back one frequency more than the other. But what it does with the positioning of those delays is a whole other story. So how I came up with the prime number delays is I drew from a big old table of like three to several thousand and a giant list of just prime numbers and then randomly picked out combinations of those and tested them for fitness is basically how that works. That's that when the screen is full of these flickering displays and I say this is generating my reverb matrices that's what it's doing when I have uh, let's see let me let me do this and I'll keep talking so we've assigned out sample to you blend between both of these and now we're assigning both of those to out samples so they are both now interpolated they've joined they've become one rather than swapping sides so what I've done is rather than having the blend from side to side be like bleeding over at this speed it's now bleeding over at half the speed and we're going to hear what that sounds like But yeah, what's going on in uh, these things here, this is the list of the primes. And when I've got something like scarcity 1 and 55796, five, what's happened is 
the computer program that I wrote in Godot Engine to do this has gone and generated a possible set of delay times and plotted it out and then generated some more and seen whether they measure better or worse than the one that I just generated. And say I generate 10 and then the one that I do has measured as a smoother transition between dark and light on the resulting plot. It starts over and it goes, okay, now we're counting from, you know, scarcity one in whatever. And each time it hits a new one, a new best score, it resets and leaves the scarcity at the number that it was. If it's still going through, then it'll continue counting up. So it's basically the computer program has generated um, 55,000 attempts at bettering the score if this one particular sound that we're using for Galactic and failed. And the other ones that I had being shown are completely different sets of, of rainbow constants because there's an enormous range of possibility. like work out all the combinations of a four by four matrix of every possible prime number from three to like 9,000. I think it's nine, well, it's probably more like four to 7,000 or so. Without, you, you can't double any of them. You can't use the same value twice. And one of the things that I'm doing is actually I did the same process for figuring out what was a good order for them to be in for this two ways matrix. And having come up with a good order for them to be in, I, I, I arrived at that the same way by picking a set of smaller ones and going like, what gets me the best score using all the same prime numbers? We're gonna randomly assign them to positions and what is best. And having randomly assigned them to positions, there was one where like the smallest number is usually in like slot three across and three down. And then the other one has to be in like two across and only one down because those smallest numbers have to be in different places or measured both across and down because if they were in the same column or the same row, it would emphasize one of the channels more than the other. And you know, when you do stuff like that, you can wind up with weird sounding spaces, like a weird cave that sounds like there's a hole in it over there. And you know, I can also set up the fitness function to test for that, but I'm setting up the fitness function to test for evenness, and that's how that's working out. Anywho, we have just done a thing, so let's find out what the thing did. My throat's hurting a little bit, so I'm not sure whether I'm going to go the full two hours today, but it's proving to be a useful day anyway. Here's our newly adjusted. And I'll probably just throw in a bunch of different noises for you. I'll steal all the noises out of this Abbey Road Plates folder. Oh, and one of the things I might think to do is a silence trick. Remembering, of course, not to save that. But we want to listen to what it does with the raw stereo. Because we already know what it does for mono, and that's a fairly mono sounding track. Oh, silence. There we go. And going to her pores. Stereo flips one. This should do the thing. Let's hear what it does. Okay, I approve of this.
So this might be our uh, Let's further experiment. There's other stuff we can do. It doesn't have to be this. Oh, let's listen to it without mulch. Not bad. What if we have only input filtering? We have one input filtering, one mulch. Oh, okay, I think I like that. Yeah, because we can do realistic spaces all day long. This is meant to be imaginary. I like the idea of it sounding like distance and it might be worth doing something like that, but I also like the idea of having it uh, be able to make high frequency ambient spaces. And we're going to shut that off, not save changes there. Here, I've got some water back here. Let's get in here and do some stuff with these mulch algorithms, because we don't need those there. Oh, and we removed the IIR amount, so that's not actually doing anything. And in stages is also commented out, so what we tried to do just then was also not doing anything. Let's let's take that back. So we can have that. High pass, no, we don't want that because this is galactic. We want it to be potentially huge. No overdrive or post drive. No early reflections. We're going to go and comment out those bi, those uh, bi quad filters, those bandpass filters. Here's one. Here's another. You can see that these are in fact always applying, which is why we got to comment them out. The other stuff, the mulch, I can actually just set the control and it won't be there. This stuff, since it's part of the usual way of processing it, ends up being always present unless I literally comment it out. That's why it was doing some of the things it was doing. And here we are with our stereo flips. There's our output stages of filtering, which again, we can switch all of that off in the controls, and so that's fine. There's our output stage. I wonder whether that's worth having in there. Let's check this out just for a bit, see what it does. Because that's part of what we were doing with the plates. That's part of what makes those sound big and deep is it's a transfer function on the output. Oh, 
I haven't quit that application yet. Quit that and then try again. This might be a sudden change in behavior, we'll see. Full on. Full sustain. And this is now with no bipod filters. And yeah. That gets very bright sounding. I also hear a high note in there. Whereas if we mulch it out, you can pretty plainly hear the underlying sound. We don't necessarily want to do this and make it just always be dark. Out stages, in stages. Well, there's another possibility. These are all filtering settings that go from 0 to 5. We could have a 0 to 5 control where it just starts introducing more and more of this stuff. And this is the way that you make it go dark, resulting in this. Oh, no, let's play with something else. Here's some kind of piano thing. If we loop this part, this is the bare piano. That is from uh, another company's YouTube video. But if we bury it in reverb, you can't tell that anymore. And as did you get this. And then if we applied mulch the way I was describing, You'd have, uh, this is with everything set to one as far as the, the five selections. And then if I make one side of it silent, so it's only coming from one side, I'll hear what happens when we do that. Away from there. Mm. What if instead I don't have any of that filtering going on? One of the things I was thinking about was trying a mid-side thing. Fully dark. That's actually very quiet. Let's see if it changes. There was also a saxophone thing that they did. The sound of that, completely buried in reverb, is this.
think this would maybe make a decent uh, galactic. We've got that capacity to have stuff be on one side and have it more or less stay there, but it doesn't really quite. There is some width here. And then if I take all of these down so that it's as bright as I can get it, I feel like the highs spread out more. Let's get out of these examples and get back into some of my examples. For instance, going right back to where was that? No silence. So from my brief little burst of note, if we had no mulch, we got this. And I'm not sure if does my code let me go full infinite sustain? I thought it did. Let's see if it did. We're not using that. We're not using that. Oh. I'm not sure if we can is going to full sustain. And I'm not quite sure how to do the calculation. On what constitutes these out stages, but you know, maybe I can because maybe in the code for infinity or something is there. Let's see. I. Let's look at the original infinity. We appear to be doing all passes. Don't need to keep that. What do I have in infinity two? This is not necessarily what I wanted. Doing a little similar. Feedback one minus that. So there is our input, and there's the feedback matrix. So it would be maxing out at one, which my one is not doing so. I'm looking for what the actual number of this should be because if this regen is uh, times 0 0.022 plus 0 0.04 and it just set it to 1, we'd have outrageous exploding distortion like that would not be correct.
So instead, so basically we have not made this calculation yet. And you know what? Four tanks, four feedbacks. raw output, but the level output is divided by, it's that divided by eight. So let's sit back up here. So 0 0.1, and that would be 0 0.22 plus 0 0.04. What do we get if we take this away? Like potentially no regen at all. And then instead of 0 is 22 plus 0 0.04, so it would become 6, we do one, two, five. Let's quickly see if this blows up immediately. That'll sound amusing. We'll find out. Getting down to the end of the stream, so what's the end of the stream if not making things explode? Right? And the nice thing is if 0 0.5 gives us exactly the right amount, we now know the correct number. So let's try that for starters. We can be fairly sure that if this dies away, no, it looks like maybe half of what we had is the correct answer. Or is it? Does this get louder again? Oh god, yes. Okay, so there we go. So we had 0 0.22 plus 0 0.04. That gave us pretty close to 0 0.0625. And that would be our ultimate regen. And then we can also take some of these and assign them to one control and get even fancier Oh no, wait, that's too much. Shouldn't be doing it on this. This is the test bed. I'll do that later. The idea was going to be to take each of these and you do a thing called edit all in scope. If I take each of these ints, they're all set to get parameter param1. If I change all of these to the same variable and then delete all the other things, all of those variables will relate to the same control and I'll have just neatly adjusted everything so that no matter what place you're using it, it's going to use the same set of controls there. So let's build this before we change stuff around too much and make it crazy. And then let's play with this a little bit and then the stream will stop. And we've now made it safe to turn their regen up all the way. And now the only thing that relates is upstages. So that's as dark as we can get. 
could probably make another batch of those just to give you more range for this filtering. Just to make stuff go real dark. Here's an interesting sound. This is from a guy called Loopy. He has a pathological high frequency noise. It's a horrible sound. Let's put it into the New Galactic with no filtering. So this would be like deep space. In a rather unpleasant way, or we can make it a lot darker. Do we have any other fun things? We could do drums, I suppose. Oh, there's a sawtooth waveform. Oh, sign bases. Let's hit some bases, some signs. That's not that useful. Yeah, that's not that useful. How about just a track then? Here's a thing called Full Day. That's actually an album of mine from way back in the day. It goes kind of like this. So to make this be anything, I have to make it be a lot quieter. That's fairly quiet, so we'll start with that. This thumpy noise is going to be pretty powerful. And here we've got uh, symbols, keys, and now we will have galactic for what? Will sustain, probably going to immediately blow up, but that's okay. One Sustain. This is the guts of Galactic, which is just sort of this lump. stuff in there where it was cutting back the feedback based on how loud stuff was. So you could throw really loud stuff into it and it wouldn't blow up in the way that this is able to do. I can find something fun to put into this. We 
Meh. And I'll put a snare into it. New variation on Galactic that can do certain things. And not to be considered as a replacement for the original Galactic, but just a different approach to get into the same space. That being a big old space. What's this sawtooth if? Oh, that's a real flutter too. That's loud. What's real flutter? Ooh. Interesting. This is a sine wave sent into a Roland space echo that I had briefly, and then I tried to demagnetize it and it died. And I ended up letting it go. So let's play with this a little bit and then make it into a space ambience thing. Duplicate that. Convert to stereo, pad it way back down using a particular favorite effect that I can't say the name of on YouTube or they'll think I'm swearing. You hear those little scrucks and noises? Let's finish this up with full sustain. We can have the dry in there as well as the wet. We'll have dry and full wet all at the same time. And uh, no filtering. You can probably hear the truck in the background when it leaves. I'll fire this off. Galactic 2 The Spacing Hopefully that will work out nicely Ultra one, ultra two. I know it. Ultra is going to be this one. Hmm. Well, I hope it sounds galactic. It's a form of galactic. Weird how it's getting out of balance. That might take a bit of looking at. This one channel is louder than the other. And I'm not sure why that would be happening. You can quickly make that go away by doing this with it, but if you didn't, what would you get?
Oh, I know why that would be happening. The channels are not the same, so this one channel is going to sing super hard on that note because they're not the same. They're slightly different. It's mono, but that channel is resonating that note a little harder than that one. And so when we have zero stereo flips, it just cranks it to be considerably louder. But when we have one, it adjusts quite a bit. But it'll still lean a little bit in that direction. There will probably be many frequencies like that. Space. Getting tired of space. Uh, anything interesting? What is Mackie Tobo two signs? Distortions. This is what I was doing to make Mackety. Ooh, that's bright. Okay, just for fun. Low frequency feedback fest. Same deal. And we'll filter the crud out of it. play with, honestly. Let's make an audio space out of this. Galactic saxophones. that those don't click when you switch it. I'm sure I can. Good enough. So we're not necessarily going to see Galactic 2 right away, but I think I can do something with this. And on that note, I'll talk to you folks later. Yeah, maybe a bit of a lay down. I was up very early this morning getting going. So, on that note, for anybody who is still there, I'll uh, 
be posting another video this coming uh, weekend, and I'll maybe see you next Monday. See you later.